Ah, oh, come on. You're not even trying. Surrender, my inferior foe! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst animated movie ripoffs. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at movies that are considered by many to be pale imitations of classic animated features that were made solely for the purpose of cashing in on the popularity of famous films. Hey guys, I just had me a crazy idea! Number 10, Bug Bites, An Ant's Life. Hey Sal! Remember when people called ants a ripoff of Pixar's A Bug's Life? Well, after seeing this travesty, you'll find a whole new appreciation for the DreamWorks film. With 3D animation that barely looks finished, awful voice acting, and irritating sound quality, this flick goes on for too long and amounts to nothing, at least according to critics and viewers. Still worried about geckos? Nah, I met them. They're not very bright. We guess it's about a caterpillar and some ants trying to survive a gecko incursion? The plot sorta gets lost in all the chase scenes. Apparently, the creators thought watching insects scuttle back and forth for half an hour counts as entertainment. I look like Bark. He can't see me. No problem. Number 9. The Secret of Mulan You will be Soldier Hua. <laughs> ah. Turns out that the company that made this adaptation has a long history of reworking beloved films into what's become known as the Secret of series. Entries include The Secret of the Hunchback, the Secret of Anastasia, and of course, The Secret of Mulan. So how does it fare? Well, not only has the Mulan entry been called a bastardization of one of animation's greatest female characters, it goes a step further by throwing in elements right out of a bug's life. Sorry, Flick, you and your friends have been ripped off twice on this list. Number 8. What's Up? Balloon to the Rescue I'm a genius! <laughs> this mockbuster not only dumps on the original Pixar epic, it's also a confusing schlockfest. For some reason, the filmmakers behind What's Up didn't think a flying house was thrilling enough, so they tossed in some magic. If you stick around long enough, you might find yourself asking why a magical stone's sole function is to turn a house into part hot air balloon or why they go out of their way to be racist towards a supporting character that happens to be Chinese. Arigato! No problem, but Arigato is Japanese. I'm Chinese. My name is Ching Ling. However, we'll forgive you if you don't even make it that far after seeing the questionable 3D animation. We'll be heroes only after we send those monsters back to another dimension, okay? Number 7. Kiara the Brave, also known as Super K. You've given me everything! But I'm still missing excitement! <laughs> Many consider this a terrible film that should have never been forced onto the viewing public. But it's also called a travesty because, when it was shipped to the United States, the distributors rebranded it to cash in on the latest Pixar release, Brave. Where did they take the king? I heard them say, the netherworld. Funnily enough, Kiara the Brave involves neither medieval Scotland nor a coming-of-age story where a strong female protagonist tries to forge her own path. What do we get instead? A superhero called Super K trying to defend the world of Dream Zone from the evil badness, while Kiara stands in the background doing pretty much nothing. As kids, we don't have the power to call on destiny, do we? Number 6. Tappy Toes Just follow my lead! Here, we get a much-needed break from horrendous 3D animation and are even treated to a higher standard of voice work. But for most people, that doesn't save Tappy Toes from being another train wreck. The limits of flash animation become clear early on, as this short happily rips off the plot of Happy Feet, minus the stellar dance sequences and the Robin Williams. Uh, uh, you like it, you like it, you want it, I got it. Sure, it tries to throw in some self-referential humor, but considering there's an uncomfortable scene where a hermit crab threatens to pinch a sea lion in not-so-child-friendly places, Tappy Toes manages to tap itself out. Epic fail. Number 5. Chop Kick Panda Ah, much better. It may only be 40-something minutes long, but out of the many, many Kung Fu Panda ripoffs, 
This is the one that made people feel like they'd gone several rounds with the Furious Five. Brought to us by the folks who created Tappy Toes, Chopkick Panda is another entry where the animation is the high point. Everything else is a panda-sized mesh of stupidity. Once again, it pretty much follows the original beat for beat, but the ridiculousness of its rushed plot and attempts to focus on humor over action leave Chopkick Panda feeling disjointed and utterly pointless. Precisely, Einstein. Number four, The Legend of Cirilla. Stop! Help freeze to death! This Canadian animation incurred the wrath of Disney. And that's not shocking considering its title was changed to Frozen Land for the US market. Subtle. The shaman says the spirits are angry with the clan. Again, this is a pretty big blunder by the distributors. Because, while the story focuses on the less than enthralling tale of an Inuit shaman and his animal friends, the name and even the signature logo were designed to match Disney's Frozen. The company behind Legend of Cirilla might have thought their film was just a blip on the radar, but in the end, the mouse house sees all. The creators should have done themselves a favor and just... Let it go! Let it go! Number three, The Frog Prince. Why can't I find my Prince Charming? Based on the reviews, you can basically summarize this mockbuster in one word. Lazy. Lazy because they only use a handful of locations, lazy because the voice work involves insulting imitations of supposedly black accents, and lazy because we immediately dislike many of the characters. Well, that's it. There's nothing more I can do. While Disney's The Princess and the Frog gave us magic, great chemistry between the lead characters, and important life lessons, all we get here is a princess who throws tantrums, a king who resents his daughter's independent attitude, and a frog who'll say practically anything just to score. I can. <laughs> of course I can. Number two, Ratatouille. Chef Marcel Toying prepares the most delicious and exotic dishes, always using special secret ingredients. They may trade Paris for Rio de Janeiro, but this ripoff remains just as blatant no matter where you set it. Obviously taking liberties from the five-star meal that is Pixar's Ratatouille, the plot follows a rodent head chef who tries to keep his restaurant open and defeat his competitors. How does he do that? By stealing fresh ingredients from human kitchens in sequences that try to imitate spy capers of old, and which, at least according to most people who've watched it, fail miserably on every conceivable level. Do yourself a favor and skip this meal. I'm afraid I don't find that to be particularly funny, Greg. Number one, A Car's Life. Sparky's Big Adventure. I'll take a car wash tomorrow! That's what you said yesterday. Cars wasn't exactly the pinnacle of Pixar's creativity, but it's still a decent and entertaining film, especially in comparison to this. Throughout this chopped together mess, we're subjected to protagonist slash motorized douchebag Sparky, who only exists to cause chaos wherever he goes. Along the way, we're treated to what could only be described as an onslaught of terrible animation, awful voice acting, and a collection of some truly detestable automobiles. Stop playing around. It's about as cheap a mockbuster as you can get, so we'll never understand how it managed to spawn multiple sequels. I feel like an idiot. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.